Thank you so much, Ewan. Well, we are still joined by Dr. Darren Green and Dr. Emil Reed chatting about HIV and AIDS, how we can prevent it, how we can get tested, and what treatment options are available. Um, so, Darren, I'm going to start with you this time around. We've gone for a test that's come out negative. We feel wonderful, but that's not where the journey ends. We need to get tested regularly. How often should we be going for tests, and, and what's that process like? How, how easy is the process? No, I think it's, it's, it's good knowing what to do. I think you need to understand why you went for the test in the first place. What motivated you to go for the initial HIV test? Because if there's behavior around uh, you know, your lifestyle that led you to that, that's what's going to need serious risk modification. You might need to change a few things if, if there are things that, that can be changed. Factor, yeah. Yeah. If it was a factor. Other than that, if you test negative the first time, due to what we know as the window period of the infection of HIV, uh, you need to be retested in a three-month uh, time span. And that's what we recommend for everyone. So initially, knowledge is power. Knowing that I'm negative is great. Often facilitates conversations. Yeah. Uh, and it gives confidence as well to people in their relationships and sexual activities. But uh, certainly, you need to take ownership and do a three-month follow-up test regularly. And it, and it is a simple process. I think we do it as a, as a sign of solidarity on a regular basis as well. Just to aid in that conversation, it really couldn't be a simpler process. Indeed. Of course, on the flip side of that coin, we come back with a positive result. Before we even look at the physical treatments, um, the psychological effect is massive, understandably so. How do we broach that first phase, Dr. Emil? How do we, we you know, what's our first starting off point once we receive that, that um, positive result? I, I think that's probably the, the thing that everybody fears most, yeah. mm. is to actually get that positive result. And the important thing is to actually guide that individual through that whole process. First of all, make them understand it's not the end of the world, and to not immediately jump in and provide them with treatment options. Because in order for you to get the patient on treatment, you actually need the patient to understand what is happening to them. So the important thing is they need to internalize this whole issue of being positive, what it means, and they need to digest it. Yeah. And they need to work through a process in order to pick up themselves again and, and, and look ahead. And only then when the patient is ready, you then sort of commence the discussion around treatment options, what medication is available, side effects, etc. And sometimes what we see by skirting the issue of saying, well, it's not too bad, there are treatment available, don't worry, you're going yeah. to be fine. We actually skirt the issue <laughs> and the importance with that, of yeah. what it means to Great. be HIV positive. Um, we'd love to hear from you, 0839133728, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask our expert panel or weigh into the conversation. When we look at the treatment options available, and I'll put this to both of you, um, what is available and, and uh, what do we need to consider? Because I, I think a huge amount of pressure on health professionals in this process. Yeah. I, I, I think, Graham, uh, 20 years back, the options were limited. And also the medication we had available was extremely dangerous because it had numerous side effects. Side effects yeah. It had complicated sort of regimes whereby you have to take medication in the morning, the afternoon and the evening. And usually those medications actually changed the life of these patients in many ways. They developed deformities of their bodies, sure. big stomachs, small buttocks, thin yeah. legs, etc. And, and that actually enforced the stigma even more. So everybody could see that this person is taking ARVs. Nowadays, we are living in a world where treatment is less complicated. You can take one tablet once a day, usually at night before you go to bed. And mm. there are still new medications being developed on a daily basis. The big thing that we need to, to, to stop is for people to think that because there are so many options available, they can just do what they want. And the important thing is the first available treatment that you take, in order to take that treatment on a daily basis, get your viral load to zero, meaning that you're not going to pro progress with regards to your disease, you're not going to fall ill, you're not going to die due to HIV. Mm. I mean, that's the drug we need to stick with. That's the because problem, yeah. if you fail the first uh, treatment regime, you're going to go on a second line or third line treatment, it's going to become more complicated and it's also going to have more side effects. So the get it right the first time. The first. Okay, we're going to let that sink in for now. We're going to take a very quick ad break and we'll continue a very important discussion on the other side. Oh,